Let me show you the difference between a toy used by a psychiatrist and a functional MRI used by a neurologist. Look at the difference in clarity and definition. Both are used for neurological diagnoses. One is obsolete and outdated in its technology. Can you guess which one? Did you know? According to the Amen Clinic's website, that a SPECT study cannot diagnose a psychiatric disorder. Now this may surprise you, especially after you've watched Dr. Daniel Amen in his TED Talk state, How would you ever know what to do for them unless you actually look? Imaging was showing us there was a better way. I always felt like I was throwing darts in the dark psychiatrist gets. Will the SPECT study give a diagnosis? No. How are diagnoses obtained at the Amen Clinics? At Amen Clinics, diagnoses about specific conditions are made through a combination of clinical history and personal interview. Question, why should a patient subject themselves to a SPECT study and the accompanying radiation if the Amen Clinics obtain a psychiatric diagnosis the same way as every other psychiatrist? In this video, I will be referencing research papers, Yelp and Better Business Bureau reviews, Daniel Amen's critics, his peers, his research, and finally his TED Talk. As Daniel ebbs and weaves into and out of fields with so many complex subjects, it's tough to do a straight line evaluation of his presentation. At times, talking about neurological conditions, personal stories, psychiatric conditions, then imaging, nutrition, and case studies. I will take different sections of the talk and piece them together. Amen Clinic's website and the literature clearly states that a SPECT study cannot be used for psychiatric diagnosis, yet his presentation gives the impression that it does. How do you know unless you look? I want this video to bridge the gap between the impression and reality. Here is Daniel's presentation on what a normal brain looks like. Here is a set of healthy SPECT scans. The image on the left shows the outside surface of the brain and a healthy scan shows full, even, symmetrical activity. The color is not important, it's the shape that matters. In the image on the right, red equals the areas of high activity, and in a healthy brain, they're typically in the back part of the brain. Notice how Daniel never mentions the age of the patient. The reference for normal, according to the Amen Clinics, is a male between the ages of five and 21. Here we see that using a SPECT study, the brain changes with age. If you compared a younger brain to that of the same individual at age 50 or 80, the patient's brain would look unhealthy. This is why the age of the patient should always be listed and patients should be compared to age-related controls. When Daniel shows what stroke and Alzheimer's look like, he is demonstrating what a SPECT study is used for. SPECT basically tells us three things about the brain. Good activity, too little, or too much. This is a true statement when you're discussing neurological disorders. It is not applicable to psychiatric disorders. In this research publication by Daniel Amen and his team, Brain Spect Imaging in Complex Psychiatric Cases, an evidence-based underutilized tool, the introduction reads, SPECT techniques provide a powerful window into the function of the brain and promise to become an important component of the routine clinical evaluation of patients with neurological and psychiatric diseases. Let us check the reference, Functional Brain SPECT, the emergence of a powerful clinical method. When you go to this paper, it showcases that SPECT studies are useful for neurological diagnosis. In that same paper, it states that the SPECT study cannot be used for psychiatric diagnosis. Once again, this is the paper that Daniel Amen and his team reference psychiatric disease. SPECT applications in psychiatric disorders are not yet clinically useful. We have not yet discovered diagnostic or prognostic functional abnormalities in the major psychiatric diseases which causes me to be confused about this next segment in his TED Talk. Here are two patients who have been diagnosed with major depression that had virtually the same symptoms, yet radically different brains. One had really low activity in the brain, 
the other one had really high activity. With this difference in blood flow rates, what did he do? Give different medications, different treatment plans, different herbs and supplements? How old was the patient with high blood flow compared to the patient with low blood flow? Daniel makes a very convincing argument, but scientifically it has no merit. The paper he used to reference stating that his machine had the capacity to diagnose psychiatric diseases states that it doesn't have the capacity to diagnose psychiatric diseases. If a SPECT study cannot diagnose depression, how is the diagnosis of depression made? Psychiatrists then, and even now, make diagnoses like they did in 1840 when Abraham Lincoln was depressed by talking to people and looking for symptom clusters. The takeaway point here is the Amen clinics diagnose psychiatric disorders the same way as every other psychiatrist in America. The difference is the Amen clinics charge the patient for a very expensive SPECT study. According to Dr. Harriet Hall, Dr. Amen charges patients thousands of dollars to inject them with radioactive compounds and show them pretty colored pictures of their brain without any credible evidence that it adds to the diagnostic or treatment process. OCD. Here Daniel shows the inside of the brain, demonstrating that it is overactive to give us a visual image of what OCD looks like when compared to a normal brain. Obsessive compulsive disorder where the front part of the brain typically works too hard so that people cannot turn off their thoughts. He is showing us a SPECT study which cannot be used for psychiatric diagnosis. How is this diagnosis made? Remember, according to the Daniel Amen website, normal is a 5 to 21 year old male. When I was that age, I remember not using my brain. I'm curious about the age of the OCD patient. Maybe the SPECT study is showing a normal middle-aged adult using their brain. Once again, the age is not listed, so I cannot make an informed decision. This is a Yelp review I found of an OCD patient who visited the Amen clinics. Her story is interesting. I went to the Amen clinic in 2006, and I have to say that it was the biggest joke and complete ripoff. I have had rather severe obsessive compulsive disorder since I was a child. This so-called brain scan stated that I did not have OCD. They then went on to tell me that I should be taking vitamin E and some other supplements. Once you go and pay, it's too late to see that it is a total fraud. Or drug abuse. The real reason not to use drugs? They damage your brain. At this point in our society, most of us know that drugs damage the brain. $5,000 to know that drugs damage the brain is kind of silly. However, Daniel gives us a visual image stating that this picture is from a drug abuser's brain. Maybe it is. Maybe it's from an AIDS dementia patient. Let's jump into the literature. Let's look at the paper that Daniel Amen referenced in his research paper. AIDS dementia complex. Brain perfusion spec should be applied cautiously in patients with suspected AIDS dementia complex because an identical brain perfusion pattern is seen among chronic cocaine poly drug users. Understand the significance of that statement. What the publication demonstrates is why a SPECT study cannot be used to diagnose certain conditions. This is an extremely important piece of information. With or without the SPECT study, the doctor needs to take the patient's history. If a SPECT study cannot diagnose a condition, it is not useful in recommending medications or determining treatment. If you're the doctor and had these two patients, what would you recommend? The AIDS dementia patient, you would put them on medication. The cocaine abuser, you would instruct to stop using cocaine. The SPECT study did not help in the diagnosis or the treatment of the patient. Now maybe you're starting to see clearly why there's so much criticism of Daniel Amen. He uses a machine that's obsolete and for a field of medicine it's not designed for. He exposes the patient to unnecessary radiation and the SPECT image has no benefit for the patient or the doctor. History of SPECT study in psychiatry. There was great excitement in the late 1980s showing that SPECT study could help psychiatrists in helping patients. Daniel goes to a conference in 1991. 
By 1992, researchers have shown that the SPECT study is not capable of helping psychiatric doctors in diagnosing patients. In 1991, I went to my first lecture on brain SPECT imaging. SPECT is a nuclear medicine study that looks at blood flow and activity. It looks at how your brain works. SPECT was presented as a tool to help psychiatrists get more information to help their patients. In 1992, I went to an all-day conference on brain SPECT imaging. It was amazing and mirrored our own early experience using SPECT in psychiatry. But at that same meeting, researchers started to complain loudly that clinical psychiatrists like me should not be doing scans, that they were only for their research. Why would researchers tell clinical psychiatrists not to use a SPECT study? Maybe the researchers understood the complexity of neuroimaging and the differences in nuclear medicine that the general public does not understand. Maybe the researchers weren't trying to stop Daniel from helping the public. Maybe the researchers were trying to prevent a psychiatrist from using nuclear medicine for neurological diagnoses to be used off-label for psychiatric diagnosis. Certain psychiatric conditions happen in an area called the synaptic cleft. It's the area between neurons. This is the area where neurons talk to one another using brain chemicals called neurotransmitters. Neurotransmitters are involved in depression and OCD. To properly measure the receptor for neurotransmitters, you would need to inject a different type of nuclear medicine than the one that is used at the Amen clinics. Daniel Amen is a psychiatrist using nuclear medicine to diagnose neurological disorders, then claiming he has a special ability to diagnose psychiatric disorders using the wrong type of nuclear medicine. SPECT is a nuclear medicine study that looks at blood flow and activity. Now, as you watch this segment of his TED Talk, are you as impressed with his reasoning? Did you know that psychiatrists are the only medical specialists that virtually never look at the organ they treat? Think about it. Cardiologists look. Neurologists look. Orthopedic doctors look. Virtually every other medical specialties look. Psychiatrist guess. Daniel's research. Understand something about Daniel Amen's research. It's not research proving that a SPECT scan can make a psychiatric diagnosis. And Daniel Amen will not release his work to the scientific community, which makes the scientific community think he's fraudulent. According to Dr. Jeffrey Lieberman, head of the psychiatry department at the Columbia College of Physicians and Surgeons, he states, there's absolutely no scientific evidence for what he says and does. If you go to Daniel Amen's website, it states that if we look at the brain, it changes everything and SPECT study, according to Daniel, removes the guesswork. In Daniel's TED talk, he gives you the image of throwing darts at a dartboard in the dark and somehow the SPECT scan removes the guessing game. Before imaging, I always felt like I was throwing darts in the dark at my patients and had hurt some of them, which horrified me. I want you to pause for a moment and visualize the image that comes to your mind. This is important because it demonstrates how human perception works. You probably have an image where the patient lies down, does their SPECT study, and the computer reads the patient's brain and gives out the patient's diagnosis, medications, and treatment plan. You think it's very specific and accurate. That's not what Daniel means. First, you do your SPECT study baseline. Then the doctor guesses at what medication to try, then performs a second SPECT study. If that medication does not improve blood flow, the doctor guesses at a different medication and performs a third SPECT study. If that doesn't improve blood flow, the doctor guesses at a different medication and performs a fourth SPECT study. That's how SPECT study removes the guesswork. What's important here is the doctor still has to guess at what medication to use. 
The SPECT study did not instruct the doctor on the diagnosis and by default could not recommend the appropriate medications. If we took out the guesswork in this example, you would have to be injected with a radioactive nuclear material for each medication used, in this example four times. Let us read some Yelp and Better Business Bureau reviews that show how doctors at the Amen clinics still had to guess with medications. The drugs they gave me caused me terrible side effects and it took me about 45 days to bounce back into myself with the right professionals. My wife went back many times to see the legal drug dealer at 200 an hour, the whole time offering my wife different types of drugs. Also, the whole time we were telling him she has severe nausea. After years and help from a real doctor, we found out everything given to her has a side effect of nausea. What doctor prescribes this to someone suffering from nausea already? We are not rich and barely could afford to do this, but I was in fear of losing my wife. They just made it worse. Dr. Darmo carelessly prescribed a treatment plan for me without checking whether I could handle the medication and herbs effectively. My husband suffered from depression. He's much better since he stopped taking the prescribed med from the Amen psychiatrist. My son actually got worse. We kept trying new supplements and dosages as if it's a guessing game. Contrary to what was sold to us as the SPECT can tell the doctor exactly what the issues are and provide a specific treatment plan based on the scans. There is a reason that most psychiatric medications have black box warnings. Give them to the wrong person and you can precipitate a disaster. What should you do? If you found this video, that means you're looking for some type of information to help you make a decision and you've been second guessing whether the Amen Clinic is appropriate for your case. The first thing you should do is stop, take a deep breath, not panic. Panicked people make poor decisions. I've read many reviews where people in panic mode spent money and time they did not have on SPECT scans that were not effective. They were desperate. At the Amen Clinics, you'll be injected with nuclear radioactive material. You'll receive a scan. A psychiatrist will play the role of neurologist, then play the role of psychiatrist. The other option is to find a local neurologist that should run you about $400. They can perform a functional MRI and that will cost you about $1,200. Then you can see a psychiatrist that will run you about $400. In this scenario, you have two specialists looking at your health and you'll save about $3,000.